Covalent bonding is when non-metal atoms share electrons to get a full outer shell. This video covers the three types of covalent substance with examples and properties of each. Firstly, simple covalent substances. For example, hydrogen. Take two hydrogen atoms. They're both in group one, so they each have one electron in their outer shell. But they need two electrons for a full outer shell. So they team up and share a pair of electrons. And now both have a full outer shell and they're both happy. Dot and cross diagrams tell us which electron belongs to which atom. The covalent bond is caused by the attractive force between the positive nuclei and the negative electron pair, making covalent bonds very strong. Another simple covalent compound is water. Oxygen is in group 6, so it has 6 electrons in its outer shell, but it needs 8 for a full outer shell. And again, hydrogen has 1, but needs 2. So the oxygen creates one covalent bond for each hydrogen, and now they all have full outer shells and everyone's happy. Here's the dot and cross diagram showing only the outer shell electrons. The third example is carbon dioxide. Carbon is in group 4, so it has 4 electrons in its outer shell and needs 8 to be full. Oxygen as before has 6 and also needs 8. Carbon creates two bonds with each oxygen atom so that all the atoms have full outer shells. And here's the dot and cross diagram. All simple covalent compounds have low boiling points. But if covalent bonds are so strong, why is the boiling point so low? Well, take water. There are weak intermolecular bonds between the molecules. So when you're boiling water, you're not breaking the covalent bonds inside the water molecules, but the intermolecular bonds between molecules, which don't take that much energy to break. The second type of covalent substance is a giant covalent compound. Instead of small molecules, these form big repeating structures called a giant lattice. The first example is diamond. It's made of carbon atoms, which has four electrons in its outer shell, but needs eight for a full shell. So it bonds to four other carbon atoms to get a full outer shell. Every other carbon does the same, forming a giant tetrahedral lattice structure. Because there are four bonds per atom, it takes a lot of energy to break, making diamond very strong and with a very high melting point. A second giant covalent compound is graphite. Like diamond, it's also made of just carbon, but this time each carbon only bonds to three others. Three bonds instead of four gives graphite a slightly lower melting point than diamond. But each carbon only has seven electrons in its outer shell, leaving one spare or delocalized electron per carbon atom. The structure is a thin honeycomb-like sheet called graphene. The spare electrons allow graphene to conduct electricity, unlike diamond, which uses all of its outer electrons for bonding. If you sandwich layers of graphene together, you get graphite, used in pencil lead. Although the covalent bonds within each layer are strong, the intermolecular forces between layers are weak, meaning they can easily slide over each other. This makes graphite very soft. The final type of covalent compound is a polymer, long-chained molecules. The most common being plastic, such as polyethylene. Polymers are structured like beads on a necklace, with each bead called a monomer. The monomer in this example is ethene, a hydrocarbon found in oil. Many monomers bond covalently to the next, making a polymer. The polymer chain can be thousands or even millions of monomers long. The chains then stick together by intermolecular forces, forming a large interwoven structure. Because the molecules are large, the weak intermolecular forces build up, making some polymers very strong and with a reasonably high melting point, depending on the polymer. So those are the three types of covalent compound with examples and properties for each. Watch the next video to learn about ionic bonding.